synthetic strategy is protecting one functional group over an another so they can do reactions. So, you know, a way to think about uh, protections is that you hide the protection group. One of the common one for alcohols is the TMS group. So we use a silane um, protecting group. So we'll make a psi little ether. The turk butyl ammonium fluoride. It's actually the fluoride that we're working with. And then it's the fluoride ion that's the most important part here. So this is a, a simple protection group. Sometimes this is shown as TMS. So we have an alcohol. Let's say we had a, a chlorine there. We had a, a double bond. And um, we wanted to protect that. Sometimes you'll see this as Tosyl chloride. This is just triethyl amine. Then they'll show that as just TMS. Then we can do our reaction. Let's say we did a KMnO4, so an oxidative um, reaction with sodium hydroxide and water. That'll give us the. Diol, and then to finish out the reaction, we would uh, remove our protecting group. Without affecting the other alcohols. So this is a simple, a straightforward one. Um, in synthesis, you'll see protections and, and deprotection groups quite a bit. So I wanted to um, make sure that we got that one uh, covered before we continue with synthesis. Okay, remember what we looked at on Thursday for synthesis is that first thing you need is to ask yourself a set of questions. So one carbon skeleton, has it grown, has it shrunk, has it rearranged? Uh, two functional groups, what functional groups did you lose? What functional groups did you gain? Three, make sure you check regiochemistry, you know. And then four, make sure you check your stereochemistry. So when you're looking at a synthetic strategy, whether it be one step or multiple steps, um, this is this is the questions you need to, to approach. So the best way to really um, get your chops on, on these is to just work some problems. So that's what we're gonna do. I'll give you some time to, to think about these, answer these questions. Um, again, go through it systematically and look at these questions and then propose a synthetic strategy. And as we go through several of these problems, you'll see that there's, there's a strategy of going forward and there's a strategy of going backwards. So one of the things to think about is to start with the starting material. Right, and move forward to the product to the final product. Right, but there's also the uh, backward you may know more about how to synthesize the product than 
where there's that, and hopefully you'll meet in the middle between these two two processes. So, okay, so let's let's try a few. So again, I'll give you a minute or two to think about these, answer these questions that we're going over, and then we'll look at the synthesis. Okay, so our first one, let's take a minute or so. Think about your car in Stelton, think about your functional groups. Okay, let's go ahead and look at this one. So if we look at our questions, have we seen a carbon skeleton change? So we have our, our, um, our aromatic, we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Did I lose a carbon? Oh wait, one, two, three, one, two, three. So no carbon changes. We're going from an alkyl halide to carboxylic acid. As far as regiochemistry, no change in the regiochemistry. Right, and then stereochemistry. There's none indicated or really for these two or possible. Right? So we don't have, we don't have to worry about regiochemistry. We're not really moving our double bond. I mean, our uh, functional groups and we're not changing any stereochemistry. There's no stereochemistry. Uh, involved. I uh, got a question on synthesis. No, there's no, no particular synthesis as in multiple synthesis on quiz four. So it all be uh, one step synthesis on, on quiz four. Um, and I forgot that I did allow you to use your, your uh, notes on, on quizzes before. So you can use your notes, don't use each other and don't use Google. All right. So if we look at, um, the this one we're going from the alkyl halide to the carboxylic acid so so this is really the change we're we're focusing on a change in functional group so with the change in functional group the first thing you notice is is we can't go from the bromide directly to the carboxylic acid so we don't we don't know that reaction um, and there's not a reaction to do that uh, without changing the carbon skeleton so first thing we're going to need to do is change this and think about it. What do we really want? We want to change that to give us a alcohol, right? So we want some type of oxygen on there. Once we have an oxygen on there, the thought of changing the oxidation level, right, is much easier to think about. So one of the ways that you should think about these is to go ahead and kind of map it out before you worry about reagents, right? And 
and this is a something that's good to practice, right? What should be possible before you think about what reagents you might need? So conversion of the bromide to the alcohol, and then oxidize, oxidation of the alcohol up to the carboxylic acid. Okay, so therefore, if we look at this one, we can start with our bromide. We can change that to the oxygen. And in this case, we can do the sodium hydroxide, maybe an acetone. Right. So this is a primary group. We're going to get the SN2. All right, so what we want is an SN2 type substitution. And then to go to the carboxylic acid, right, we want to do a full oxidation. And so we can use something like the chromic acid and sulfuric acid, right, to fully oxidize that up to the carboxylic acid. We could also use the sodium dichromate and acid. Okay, but if you put the PCC in methylene chloride, that one would only have gone to the aldehyde. So that one would have been incorrect. Okay, okay questions about the synthesis? Questions about the strategy to do this one? As you can see, this is a good way to, to review all of your, your reactions for the final exam. Okay, okay let's uh, look at another one. Again, kind of go through that process, ask yourself those questions. Let's take a, a, a couple of questions. Um, there's a question here about, can we get any more practice other than sapling? I'll look and see if I can, uh, if I have an old review for exam question bank uh, and can post that with the, with the answers. So I'll take a look and see if it's, it's there, it'll be under, uh, uh, on, in the in the modules, so let's take a couple minutes. So let's go ahead and take a look. OK, 
Okay, on this one, if we look at our carbon structure, we can see here we have one, two, three, four, five. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we looks like we've added a carbon. For our functional groups, we didn't do anything to this one, which is important, right? That's still an alcohol. But we did uh, convert this from an al 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 uh, ketone to an al alcohol. So ketone to alcohol. So for our functional groups. And then for our um, regiochemistry, it looks like the addition occurred right there. So regio, it looks like we're same location. So it looks like all the reactions occurring in the same, same place. And then there's no stere stereochemistry indicated, right? And although, um, these are symmetric, so there wouldn't be any stereochemistry. So not none indicated and none possible. Okay, and remember for the final exam, we're gonna go back and you'll have to do nomenclature. So make sure you uh, review your R and your S um, and the fact that in this case, right, since these are two methyl groups, that's not a chiral center. Okay, so we need to figure out a way to add a carbon to this position, right? And in the process, maybe if we're lucky, we can go from a ketone to an alcohol. And the whole time we need to uh, not react with this alcohol here, okay? So if we think about the ways we could add a carbon to a carbonyl, right? If we think about adding carbons, we only have a few possibilities, right? We've got the, the, uh, the acetylide reaction, right? So sodium amide followed by our Bromide, we've got the Grignard to uh, Carbonyl. We've got the Grignard to the Epoxide. Um, we got rearrangements, right? But adding, we, we don't have a whole lot of reactions to add, add carbon. So uh, listing all those out and, and you can see, and this one sure looks like this, right? So therefore, if we think about this reaction, you know, if we take and add just the Grignard, we only need a methyl. What's gonna happen if we do this reaction here? Well, with Grignard's, um, do they react with OHs? Well, they somewhat, what they act with is acidic protons. So the reaction here would have not been a big change in the alcohol, but deprotonation, which actually makes the addition to the carbonyl uh, not possible. So here we have a reaction where what we need to do is actually um, complicated because of our functional group. So that other functional group, then what do we need to do? Well, we need to protect it, right? So what we're gonna to need to do is protect this, right? And then once we get to that, we can react, right? And then we'll have to uh, deprotect. Okay, and again, sketching this out like this is a good strategy, especially when we get to uh, multiple more than more than a couple of steps. So we just looked at one of the synthetic strategy, the uh, protection strategies. So we can take this, react that with 
the silyl chloride. And a mild base, so triethylamine. That gets me my protection, so trimethylsilane. Now we have that, we can react that with uh, the methyl Grignard reagent in the first step. Second step, mild base solution. That forms the alcohol, right? And I've added my carbon. And then next step, we add our deprotection, which is the tetrabutamol fluoride. Questions about this one? So again, step by step, look and see what you need to do. And then there's some problem solving, right? Thinking about the things you've learned so far, what reactions do you have in your toolbox? And then what do you need to do to actually get that done? Are there any complications? And in this case, we're doing a protection reaction and then deprotection uh, step. Let's uh, try another one. What we're trying, I'm trying to do here is go through several different synthetic strategies. So again, let's take a couple minutes. Look at this one, evaluate your structures. Okay, let's take a look. So if we look at our carbon skeleton, so we have one, two, three, four, five here, one, two, three, four, five. So it, no change in carbon skeleton. If we look at our functional groups, we do see that we're going from, from an alkane to a diol. Okay. If we look at regiochemistry, um, since this first start starting material is symmetric, we do end up with this, but there's really no worry about regiochemistry other than the diol is a one, two. So where it comes on the ring, since this is symmetrical, um, that's not a problem, but we do have a one, two diol. So that's important to note. So this is a one, two diol. 
And then stereochemistry, we do have stereochemistry here. So we have a cis addition. Okay, both of the double bonds are in the same direction. I mean, both the alcohols in the same direction. Okay. So the, the big hint here is how many reactions do we have for alkanes? Um, well, we, we really only have one because all we have is carbons and carbon bonds and carbon hydrogen bonds. We don't have a lot of possibilities. We don't have big uh, dipole moments. Uh, we don't have anything that really can oxidize. So the only real possibility we have here is a uh, radical reaction. So the only possibility we have for an alkane is to do some type of halide um, reaction to add a halide. Um, and then if we look at our, again, kind of thinking about forward, this is the only reaction we have. Thinking about backwards, if we want to get, you know, a one, two, cis, you know, sin addition. And I should have put that, sorry, this is sin, not cis. Sin addition. Um, then the way we do that is we start with a alkene and react it with, you know, manganese, um, I mean, uh, potassium manganate uh, with, you know, base and water, or we use the osmium tetroxide, right? Um, followed by uh, some type of mild reducing agent, right? So, so we know we need to get dial. So is there a way to go from the halide to the double bond, right? So that's one of the questions and to go from a halide to a double bond and alkyl halide, all we need to do is do an elimination. Okay, so this reaction, we start with the alkane, we'll do a bromination, right? radical reaction to add the bromine, and then we will do a E2 type elimination to give us our double bond. And again, it's, it, whether it goes up or down, regiochemistry wise, uh, it'll end up giving the same product. And then we do the final step, you know, with either the manganate or the osmium tetroxide. get the uh, dial. Okay. So this one is unique because we had really no reactive functional groups since we had to add it. And so we, yeah, radical halogenation is the way that we turn an alkane into a functional group we can start to work with. Okay. Questions about this one? Again, we'll, we'll try and look at several of uh, potential strategies and hopefully this is bringing back up the old reactions you had. So this one, again, let's take a couple of minutes to look at it.
take one more minute. Okay, so on this one, if we look at our carbon skeleton, we've added two carbons. If we look at our uh, functional group, right, we've gone from an alcohol to an aldehyde. If we look at our regiochemistry, we've moved our reactive site. So if we look here, this is the carbon where we have an ROH, right? And now that's moved to this position out here. So when we moved it, we moved it two away, right? So one, two, so it's on this position. And if we look at functional group, I mean, uh, stereochemistry, none shown. And then possible, right? Because we we start with the symmetric um, alcohol here, right? So there's a, a line right there. So we've got to add two carbons, and we're moving our functional group. And the 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 key to thinking about this one is the fact that we're moving it. You know, um, we've moved it two positions. So again, the more experience you get with this, but I, I tried to point out that there is a, is a reaction where we can do that to move two positions. And that is when we use the Grignard and the epoxide, right? So if we have the Grignard and the epoxide, what that does is add two carbons with the functional group on that terminus. And if we think about, if we look at that more carefully, right, that's one, two. So we move that functional group from the R to two carbons away, okay? So that's that's the, 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 the trick that you need to know in this one. Most of the time, functional group moving like this, you're moving it over one is not difficult, moving it two, that's why I made such a big deal about the, the epoxide is that it moves to Usually you're either the functional group is at the original position or it's it's moving one over to move it two, three. We haven't learned any tricks for three. Moving it two or three or four away is going to be uh, a, a more, more difficult and, and less options. So therefore what we need to think about is we're going to go through the alcohol. So we're going to start with our alcohol all right, we're going to need to turn our alcohol into the bromide, turn the bromide into the Grignard, right? and then we'll turn that into the, so we're adding lots of steps here, right? So got to, that'll get us to the alcohol, and then the last step, we'll have to take the alcohol to the aldehyde. Oops, uh, messed that all up. Okay. So one of the one of the things that students often have is you want to do things too fast, and then when you start thinking about these reagents, um, it, it, you can start to panic. Don't panic. Draw it out like this. Take some time. Draw it out like this, and then think about how do I go from an alcohol to a bromide? Well, uh, I could make the tosylate and then do a, a conversion, or I could use something like PBR three. Okay, to go from the bromide to the Grignard, I just need magnesium and ether. Um, the Grignard with the epoxide, and it's followed by, uh, you know, a proton source, and then oxidation here. We've got oxidation to the aldehyde. That's going to be PCC and methylene chloride because I want it to stop after the oxidation of this and carboxylic acid, I could have used uh, a different reagent, the, one of the chromic acid salts, okay? 
So once we've got that all done, we got our, our, our synthesis, right? Um, one, two, three, four, or if you count the protonation, five step uh, synthesis. Any questions about this one? A little bit longer, a little bit more um, involved. Okay, and since we need to be thinking about the final exam, let's go ahead and show the other way to do this one. Okay, um, well, we, the HBR could work, right? That would, that would be fine. Um, the other uh, way to do it, be the to make the tussellate right and then add, add a good group. So we've got several ways to do that. Um, really only of the reactions that we use uh, commonly, we only know the PCC for the last step. Let's look at uh, another one. One where we start with the acetylide. And let's take a couple of minutes. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. So in this case, all right, we're starting with two carbons. We're adding a bunch of carbons, right? And this aromatic group, which you'll learn about next semester. So for our carbons, we're adding one, two, two carbons on one side. Uh, and I'll really show it this way. <laughs> We're adding this to the other side. Uh, functional groups. We're going from the alkyne to the alkene. Uh, regiochemistry. Okay, this is important, right? The triple bond, the uh, double bond is, um, you know, we have two carbons and then, I don't know how to, how to write that out real quick easily, but we have the carbons here. So we'll see. Um, the double bond is at three, four. And then our stereochemistry, we have a cis alkene. Now with the acetylide, that gives us a pretty straightforward reaction. What we're gonna to need to do is add the 
two carbons, and then we'll come back and add this benzylic group, and then we can do our functional group change. So again, let's let's draw it out. So we're going to need to do. this and then we can add our other carbons and we have to keep our acetylide to the last because that's that's the way we're going to be adding these groups right and then from here then we can reduce this okay we can't do this in all uh, one step, right? Because we need to be careful of where the regiochemistry is of our alkyne. So the reagents for these, first we'll add our sodium amide, that'll form the acetylide. And then we'll add our electrophilic group. So that adds out our two carbons. And then our two carbons, right? And we're gonna do that one more time. So the sodium, sodium amide. Uh, this time we'll add the benzylic bromide. And then from there, uh, now we're going, going from the alkyne to the cis. Uh, Alkene, and so for this one, we're going to use hydrogen and Lindler's catalyst to give us our um, alkene. Okay. Any questions about this one? And we've seen these before, right? So we've saw these previous chapter. Um, we'll look at a, another one a little bit more complicated on this one in a second. Okay. Again, let's take a couple of minutes. Let's look at this one. Okay, let's take a look. So if we look at our carbons, it doesn't look like we're changing any of our carbons, right? So we got our six member ring and the methyl group. So for carbons, no change. Functional group here, um, no change. All right, we're going from alcohol to alcohol, but regiochemistry, We've moved one carbon, right? So we've moved our 
alcohol from the tertiary position here to the secondary position, right? And it could have been either one of these two, um, but we've moved our, and then stereochemistry none showed. So um, this is this is a little bit of different uh, strategy, right? We've got to figure out a way to selectively um, move the alcohol from this position to this position. So if we think about um, ways to move alcohols or to have control over regiochemistry of alcohols, um, then you can think about, okay, if we're gonna produce an alcohol and we have uh, two positions to put it into, right? So I have two possible positions, this one or that one, it actually says, well, I'm, I'm, I'm giving the hint, right? So it says that if I go to the alkene, I have a possibility of, you know, getting, several different ways to do this, right? So we have no rearrangement. We have the alcohol going up, we have the alcohol going down. Um, okay, and we have the possibility of rearrangement. So to get this alcohol to move, what I'm gonna need to do is actually go from the alcohol through the alkene to the alcohol. Okay. So the synthesis strategy here. So in the first case, what I want to do is I make sure that I get the most stable alkene. Right, so I'm not looking at the, um, I wanna make sure that I don't eliminate to this position here. <laughs> Potentially I could do that if I did something that was based on steric. So if I tried to force it through E2, I could get the double bond in this position versus this one. But if I do something that's going to form the more, most stable um, double bond, that's this one. So for this one, I can just do dehydration, right, with sulfuric acid. Um, so strong acid, um, not dilute, concentrated, right? Sometimes you'll see this written down. So if you see concentrated, they, they're trying to do a dehydration, which forms a double bond. And then if I get the least substituted alcohol, which is what this one is, I'm going to use uh, the borane, so hydroboration, oxidation. Right, and then uh, so BH3 followed by the hydroperoxide. Okay, questions about this one? Okay. So this one, this one seems a little tricky because we're we're moving a functional group without changing the functional group. Um, but we have to go through the double bond to then get the selective uh, movement of that alcohol. Questions about these? Is this helping you learn your, your old reactions and some of the stereochemistry? Okay. All right, let's do, let's do another one. Taking too long to draw that. Okay, this one's a little tougher. Let's take a couple minutes on this one.
Okay, let's take a look. So if we look at our carbons here, right, we see no change. Count your carbons, right, and we see we've added no carbon. All right, if we look at our functional group, we see that we've gone from an alkane. Right, and that's kind of a hint there to a ketone. The reason the alkane is a, a hint is there's really only a couple of reactions for alkane. So it kind of gives you a place. Regiochemistry, we have a very specific place and it's, it's not uh, next to the group. It's not in the benzylic group. And that's the thing to think about is not benzylic. Right, it's, it's uh, two away from the benzene. And this is important because it's this benzylic position that's the most reactive position. It'd be the most stable. So that's important. And then stereochemistry, there's none shown and none possible. So if we start with a benzylic, that means uh, start with alkane. Uh, first thing we're gonna need to do is activate this. So the first step is going to need to be to um, get this to a functional group that we can start to, to think about. So since this is aromatic here, we can do the benzylic, which is the NBS reaction. Um, so we can use NBS, it gives us a very clear way to do that bromide. Now, if we think about it, okay, so now we've got that bromide there. How do I get the alcohol or the ketone? And I just gave a hint, right? We form the alcohol and then we oxidize it. So again, like the previous one, uh, that alcohol reaction, because we can selectively get either the more stable or the least stable, that's a great way to do this reaction. So. If we think about it, we're going to go to the alkene. Right, so the alkene, I have possibilities of selectivity. And then I'm going to add the alcohol to the less stable position. Right, they're both secondary, but one is benzylic and one is not. So one's in conjugation, one would not be in conjugation with the with the aromatic ring, and then last step, I'll do the oxidation. Okay. Right. Questions about this one? So let's put in our reagents. Yeah, I'll look at the MBS in just a second. Okay, so the first step where we, uh, we're, uh, first step is MBS, so we form the bromide, then we can do the elimination. And again, um, you just want a, a elimination. So the TB toxide will give me an E2 elimination. Then here we want the least stable, right? So. This position would be the most stable. So again, we were going to use the uh, hydroboration oxidation. And then that with the oxidation. Here we can use the PCC, methylene chloride, but we could have also used um, uh, chromic acid. Okay. Questions about that one? Okay, oh, the MBS, right. 
so, um, so NBS is in bromo succinamin. What this does is give us a bromine radical reaction. And the two places you'll see the this used will be with benzylic and allylic. The um, reason that we use NBS is more for allylic and benzoic, but the nice thing about using NBS is it's easy to use uh, synthetically in the lab. Um, if we think about why it would be useful for uh, allylic romination is that if we did just BR2 and light, then we would have competition between the radical reaction and the, the addition of the dibromide uh, this way. So um, when we're looking at benzylic and allylic, these are our, our two possi possibilities. Um, the reaction is ra radical. Um, what happens is you form the bromine radical and it goes on to, to do the reaction. It's just very specific for allylic and then it's very useful for benzylic positions. And we always get the bromination at the most stable position, which is the allylic or the benzylic position, one away from those double bonds. Okay. Does that help the question answer the question there? Okay, thank you. All right, let's look at uh, one more and then we'll call it a, a day. Must do another satellite reaction. Take a couple minutes, look at this one. Stereochemistry one is, on this one is tricky. So make sure you, you evaluate your stereochemistry.
let's take a look. Well, of course, this one we're adding carbons, right? So we've added um, four carbons. And we'll talk about this more, but it looks like we got, we're adding two and two, right? Because our groups are in the middle. Functional wise, um, you know, we're, we're going from an alkyne to a dibromide. Regiochemistry, right? We can say that it's in the middle here. We're at the three, four position. And then stereo. All right, we've got um, uh, what appears to be a uh, let's see. Cis bromide. Okay. All right. So if we look at this one, adding the, the carbons is, is not uh, very difficult. So, you know, if we outline this, we can add the two carbons here. And then we can add the two carbons here. Right. And then we've got a question. And then if we're only gonna add the two bromines, right? We probably, um, and either way we do it, we can do it in two steps. So then the question comes into, I need to make sure I'm careful here. is this one, right? Now, if we think about bromination, that's gonna be the trick. So if we think about taking this, right? And doing a dibromination with that, then what we're gonna end up with is not the cis, meaning both sides, we're gonna end up with the trans. That's because this is gonna go through the bromineum ion. Okay. Which means that if these are on the same side, how could I show these to be on the same side? Well, I could rotate around that bond. Well, if I rotate around that bond, that means that this would have looked like this, right? Which gets me these both on the same side. So now these are both on the same side, but look what happened. If I started with the trans, I would end up with this. If we had started with the cis, right? And we did our bromination then I would have had, right? This, this stereochemistry can't be controlled. It's always gonna be anti, that's the mechanism. But then if I rotate this product, what do I get? I get what appears to be the bromines adding to the same side, okay? So the stereochemistry in this one is, is complicated because we have two stereo things. We can go from the alkyne to, and it's it's better to go from the alkyne to the alkene and then the alkene to the dibromide than trying to go from the alkyne to a dibromide, which I'll have to be very careful with my reagents and then reducing that. Um, and I still have the same problem, which is my stereochemistry would be, uh, would be messed up. So in this case, I have more control because I can go between these two um, and then end up with a product. So what I want to do to get that configuration is actually go to the cis alkene first, then do my bromination. And then that will um, delocalize. I mean, that will rotate to give me my product. Okay, so 
therefore my intermediate here is going to be this. Okay. Hope everybody can, can follow that one. So my product, all it is is a conformational rotation. This is just a conformational rotation. So therefore, this is my strategy, right? So again, we go up sodium amide, followed by the electrophilic group. So we make the acetylide, do it again. Remember, we never do these in, in one step. So even if they're symmetric, we need to break them out, do them in two steps. And then the reduction here is going to be hydrogen and Lindler's catalyst. Right, so we use a poison catalyst. And then the last step is just bromine and methylene chloride. We don't want the hyalohydrin formed. So we will use uh, the bromine. Okay. Any questions about this one? All right, so that's synthesis. I think we've got um, just a couple more minutes before your quiz starts, so I'll let you go so you can get ready to start that. Again, you do have a couple hours in case you have to run to another class uh, to do that, okay? Um, on Thursday, we'll do review. Um, I'll see if I can find some more uh, reactions 